What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today I've got three knives to take a look at from Riot. Uh, they are the Tigers, and you've probably seen these online, they're super super popular, and I know this is not a very flattering angle, but uh, I've got some Riots here, and uh, we're going to be going through these. So I wanted to show that I actually do have three of them, uh, taking up my entire little cutting board here, and model wise, this is what we're working with, left to right. Tiger uh, Diamond Pattern, Tiger Fat Carbon Copper Camo, and I believe the last was a Stripe. Uh, there you go, Stripe Pattern. So there's all three. Not sure which is going to be, uh, one of these will be on the site here pretty quick. Um, but anyway, these are the three. Reminder guys, check out the website bladezilla.ca where I have a lot of the knives featured on this channel available, ready to go, shipping Canada and US. Uh, knives are located in Canada, so there's no duty or import fees, and they'll actually get there. So there you go. Some Shergoroffs, some uh, uh, Olianokovs, uh, some RJ Martins, all kinds of good stuff. There you go, bladezilla.ca. But let's get into this uh, one at a time here. They obviously come with these cool sleeves, which uh, we're not going to worry too much about. They are just to hold the knives in place. So I'm going to kind of cut ahead here to when they're all ready to rock and I'll save you the time. Alright, so since uh, since the unboxing portion of this are going to be identical for each, what I'm going to do is kind of just show you one and then uh, we'll kind of cut to pulling the knives, uh, putting them all out side by side and kind of looking at them that way. But uh, for the sake of time savings, let's just grab uh, any preference. I kind of want to do the diamond one, so we'll start with that. Uh, anyway, it's easier for me to kind of show one. So let's do that. So this is kind of how they come, obviously, in the nice box, wrapped with the uh, the paper that we saw earlier, uh, Riot knives on the side, and then on the actual label we have the knife that it uh, is corresponding to. So if you want to scan that code, it doesn't really matter as well. Always pay attention to the serial number. So in this case, 156. On, uh, on the diamond. Magnetically held open and then we go into a nice velcro sleeve which is awesome and then it looks like there's actually a little tag I'm assuming it's a titanium tag and then we've got a little stamped date of manufacture so there you go Tiger M390 handle diamond pattern designer Alvin Lee serial number 156 to match the box and then date of manufacture uh, November 2023 so pretty, uh, pretty sweet little setup actually. And then at Riot Knives, and then hashtag Riot Knives. So when I post this up, maybe I'll actually hashtag those. But I'm kind of surprised that's in the box, not in there. But that's okay. As long as it's there, that's all I really care about. Inside the Velcro case, and like I said, this is going to be the same for all of them. So I'm not going to worry too much about doing each individually. Uh, so a couple things. I've got some stickers, we've got a little Velcro kind of setup there, you can stick on whatever, a little patch, a uh, BioDry, obviously great to eat, oh wait, do not eat, it sucks, I was about to eat it, um, we've got some extra hardware and some washers, which is pretty sweet, that uh, normally doesn't come with a lot of knives, so some hardware, which is cool, a little carrying case with the Riot logo on it, and if you are unfamiliar with Riot, they make some of the, uh, a lot of the OEMs for some of the higher end, like Chavez, uh, some just really reputable brands. They do a good job, so, um, you know, nice to get these little accessories with it. Uh, some tools as well, it looks like. So, I, I don't know the exact tools that these are. I'm not, uh, I'm not going into detail uh, like I normally do, but it uh, looks like we've got some, I'm guessing there's probably some kind of unique pivot to it. That requires that. Uh, the tool probably goes inside the handle for twisting and then some Torx uh, screws accordingly. So that's pretty sick. I didn't expect any tools. So that to me is a nice little uh, win of the day there. We're going to put this all back because I don't need any of this uh, filling up my screen. So let's get all that back in and then our nice little knife bag which is cool. And then this is where the magic happens, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a knife in here. 
So there we go. Let's get that off to the side. And slide this guy out of the little sleeve here. And there we go. There's our Riot Tiger. What does everyone think? Any ideas? Any uh, feedback? Let's make that a little centered. Um, well, first and foremost, I can see why I'm guessing that uh, it's got that little tool for the pivot system there. That's not exactly uh, user serviceable, so it's cool that it came with that. Huge beefy backspacer on this. Lots of uh, milling and texturing. If it wants to focus, you can probably see it too. Wow, that comes right up to the top here. The diamond pattern to me is more of a, you know, it's 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 small. It's more of a kind of smaller crosshatch, but definitely grippy, real nice. It looks fatter as I roll this than it uh, than it actually is, but it's a big knife. In the back, nice clip profile, about there. So you've got a fair amount sticking out of your pocket, which is fine for the design. Nice little bend in the clip as well, so it's going to have a lot of tension on it. You know what, this is a pretty sweet little, uh, big knife. Lanyard hole in the tip. This is, these are all just kind of first impressions. This is the first time I'm looking at it, so. Um, and then we've got a liner lock, flipper tab, no jimping, kind of built into the tip a little bit. Nice beveling to the backspacer. Some notches and boxes, kind of cut into the top here. That's nice, pretty cool. Blade centered. Beautiful center. You know, good tight tolerances. This is this is solid. Um, these are all little things I look for. So let's let's fire this guy out. Let's see what we got. That is a cool looking blade. So a couple things first and foremost. Um, wow, it looks like a rhino's horn with that tanto. We've got this beautiful line up top here, which is uh, really really cool with the belt lines. It's it is razor thin and razor sharp. That's actually really thin. Considering the stock on this, I don't know what that is, probably four and a half mil or something. It's a thick blade, but down low it's very slicey. Like that is a very, whew, very fine hollow grind on there. But yeah, what do, you, what do you guys think? To me that is a rhino's horn, like first and foremost. That is, uh, you know, I was having a conversation with a fellow on Instagram recently about proportions on uh, on this knife and he's going ah, I don't know I, I don't I'm not saying I hate it but I'm also um, it, it's gonna have to grow on me because the proportions just look a little strange and you know in hand it, it definitely doesn't look that strange it's you know you're looking at this from a 2d angle here um, in hand it's it's terrific but uh, lots to talk about lots to compare to um, my goodness this is a beefy knife but you know what it feels a lot lighter than uh, than I was expecting. Action's good. Running on bearings, obviously. Uh, really cool. I'm very impressed. Um, let's crack the other guys out of the box here and start doing some comparisons, start talking about it a little bit more. And uh, more than anything, let's let's grab a cup of coffee, grab, uh, grab a beer or whiskey or whatever, and uh, let's get jamming here. So uh, through the magic of cinema, we're going to cut to the other threes uh, going through that whole process, and uh, we'll get on with the show. And just like that, we're back, and uh, all three out of the box, and uh, lots to really talk about here, to be honest. there's uh, This is pretty sweet little setup. Um, so first and foremost, when I ordered these three, it was kind of blind in terms of let's grab a carbon one, let's grab a couple Thai ones. You know me, I like my plain Thai. And uh, from my understanding, the diamond pattern was the one that everyone was kind of flocking to, um, which was this one we showed originally. And diamond being the fact that it's just a kind of cross-hatchy diamond pattern. Um, I was expecting the diamond to be a little bigger than, uh, than what I was kind of seeing from online, but I, I get it. It's, it's beautiful. It looks terrific. It's just uh, a little smaller than I was expecting the pattern to kind of be. Uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, looks great though, you know, obviously all three kind of have this kind of line break here and then the, you know, the overall profile is very similar. The, uh, the stripe, this was the one that was a little bit like, uh, how micro is that stripe going to be? And it's, uh, it's bigger than I was expecting. That's quite nice and very well done. That's fine millwork. Same pattern as well on the back side. 
nice rounded edges. Just a really solid, well done design. I, I, I think if this was my knife, I think I'd probably pick this one. Uh, just because it looks cool. And are the stripes all straight? I'm just trying to look at that now. They appear to be. I don't. I was kind of looking. You know, the Shiro sometimes do some milling where they curve and whatnot. But I think these are all horizontal, as far as my little camera lens can see, which is what I look at when I film these videos, uh, which is not very detailed. It's about an inch and a half. That's what she said. Um, and then obviously the uh, the fat carbon. I think is was it fat carbon or? Ooh, baby. I first of all. The colors on this look terrific. It's got that beautiful inlay that when you roll the light like this, it's changing constantly. There's no seam that I can feel on this one. I don't know if they're all the same or not, but you you essentially can't even feel the, the gap between the carbon and the titanium, which is sick. That is so well done. Uh, it's got, obviously, some pivot hardware on it, which is also really, really nice. And I think this guy has a premium of about 50 bucks versus the other two. So you get some, some carbon in there and you get some little accents that kind of add to the overall package. You lose the milling on the back here on the scale that I was referring to earlier. Remember those little square boxes? Or I could just show you. That I'm talking about there. See the little boxes on the handle, those are absent. You still have the lanyard hole in the back backspacer, which is awesome. But um, yeah, it's a great looking knife. This really reminds me of that uh, Eagle Rock kind of colorway that I had on the. I remember a little while ago, the CKF. I've done a video on this CKF uh, Bob Terzola Eagle Rock. And uh, that's, that had that kind of red, black, gold kind of colorway to the, the carbon. And, uh, you know, it really reminds me of that, which is awesome. So if you're into that knife, you'll be into this. And, uh, or at least the colorways. There's something about red and gold and black that just works so well together. You know, I'm, I'm looking at this accents on the, uh, the pivot, though. I'm kind of wondering, like, why they chose that and then didn't match the clip. Usually the clip in that is kind of the design, right? So that's an interesting design choice. But beautiful nonetheless. And then back to the, uh, the stripe here. Maybe uh, It's funny, the camera is like trying so hard to uh, find stuff in the background when it's like, no, no, just focus on the knife. Yeah, the stripes are definitely bigger than I was expecting. Which is it? Which is a good thing because I was expecting much smaller, and this is more in tune with what I like. I love the full, uh, obviously the full tie frame, where on the carbon you get the gap in the space between the carbon and the uh, titanium, and when that's not done perfectly, it can be a bit of an issue. But in this case, that's obviously not uh, not a concern. So let's uh, let's take a look at this one, action wise. Yeah, both the same as the other. Really smooth. Really just solid, feels really solid. And maybe what I'll do is I'll try the other one here uh, just for kicks and giggles. Back to the uh, carbon. This one feels a little different. Maybe it just sounds different. Action is actually very similar. Bearing's nice and smooth, but the sound of the carbon kind of makes it sound a little lighter. Audibly anyway. And I do have an, a microphone down in the corner to your left. So hopefully it picks up some of those cool sounds. But different, uh, just a different feel, I think, action-wise. These two should sound almost identical. Yeah. It, they're they're Riot made. I'm not worried too much about tolerances here. Huh, interesting. I always like finding those little subtleties. Um, now in terms of the actual, everything else on the knife I believe is the same. So when we talk about the blade steel, I think they're all M390 if I'm not mistaken, or are they M398? M390, obviously all satin finish. And uh, 
nothing too crazy in that regard in terms of changes wise you know I always like to look at the jimping to make sure that they all have identical uh, design elements to them in that regard which they obviously do so in this regard so you can kind of see a nice bowl like a, a concave bowl on the tip of these things which is an interesting way to do things right because typically you want that in front of the flipper tab like on the shiros for it to kind of fall in front uh, that's very deep, you know, I don't see anyone really holding that all the way down there. You know, it sticks up quite a bit as well. Not bad or anything, I'm just looking at the design lines, right? If you always follow the spine, it kind of goes over top of it. Um, I'm going to put this one away and go back to the stripe. So, let's take a look. So we've got Riot on the side of the blade, written in beautifully. We've got a bit of a recurve to it here as well. That's interesting. Razor sharp, satin finish. It, uh, it gives me vibes a little bit of, uh, what was that brand I had a little while ago? Something obscene. Uh, what model? I can't recall what model it was, but I get a lot of vibes from that in this. And uh, obviously that's a Riot made knife as well. In terms of it being M390, usually they write it somewhere on here, but let's find it. Um, I'm not seeing it anywhere. I can't remember where they wrote it. I thought it was inside here on some of the old ones, but it could be underneath or maybe there. I'm not seeing M390 anywhere on the blade, which is kind of weird for a Riot, unless I'm blind, which uh, could be the case. And it's not on the flipper tab and it's not down inside, so maybe they don't write M390 on these guys. And I, I, without checking every single knife, I would assume that's what they're doing. I'm just so used to looking at sheer gore offs so that sometimes I just... Uh, forget where most knife manufacturers put it. Um, the other thing that we did talk about is that they were numbered, right? So that was 156, I'm not sure what this is. Um, I'm curious if that's written somewhere on here. So let's look inside the knife. So there's your 152 on this guy, written underneath the backspacer. Well, these will focus the camera on the backspacer and then shine a light in there. See that just underneath to the right, 152. Pretty cool. If it wants to ever focus. This is like the battle of my life here. Yeah, 152. And then inside it, uh, let's see, there is some writing inside. I don't I can't really tell what it says, but I will look. There's some milling marks. Ooh, that's a sexy little inside to there. Ooh, I'm gonna have to show that. All right, we're gonna uh, turn off the adjust here. And uh, it's gonna be pretty over uh, overexposed here for about five seconds just to show you the inside of this one sec. Hopefully you guys can kind of see inside the knife here. Uh, it's uh, cranked up the ISO on the camera to kind of show, but so a couple things I'm looking at inside the knife. So I love the cutout inside the back spacer uh, for the knife centering. That's a nice little, you don't have to do that quality. I see a bolt on the inside, so some kind of uh, screw. I don't know what that's for, but I'm assuming it's to uh, probably service the knife of some kind. I see another screw on the inside as well next to the serial number of that 152. Uh, don't know what that's gonna be for as well. I'm almost wondering if it uh, somehow installed the, uh, maybe the lanyard hole? Is that how that's put on there? No. Yeah, I don't know what that is without opening up and playing with it. The milling on the inside, remember I was telling the uh, there's some writing on the inside earlier. Well, there's that writing. Don't know what it is. I'm assuming it's the signature of uh, Alvin Lee or something. Tons of skeletonization on this, and we'll we'll cut to, uh, at some point here, we'll weigh this out and see what this uh, this beauty weighs. But it, it I was expecting it, to, based on its size, to uh, weigh a lot more than it does. Because I think the last Riot made uh, knife I did was the Terminator knife, and that thing was beefly so pretty cool still don't see a uh, steel written anywhere inside it uh, i dig that it's a liner lock that's pretty sick 
nice little inset kind of go situation going on. Uh, I'm going to turn off this ISO because this looks ridiculous, so just give me a sec here. Okay, we are back on uh, regular settings here. Um, anyway, so it, it is kind of strange that, uh, you know, we don't have any M390 verbiage anywhere on it, unless I'm completely blind because I thought they had written it like in here or uh, somewhere last time on a lot of the Riots, and that's not like them to forego that. So not a big deal. Um, what else can I see on the inside? So yeah, the skeletonization is beautifully done. Just gorgeous inside. We've got a uh, nice little detent ball sticking up there. And then we don't need an over-travel stop because we've got a frame that it pushes up against. So no issues there. Which is always super, super cool. So I am curious to always see those design differences between carbon and titanium. So as far as I can tell, it's just the little boxes on the side here. And oh, well, wow, top as well. So another little thing on the top here. Some more boxes are lacking. The top seems the same there, just above the pivot. There's three little squares, so those are also missing. And then on uh, the inside, whatever else are we looking at here? I don't see too much more going on beyond that. Clips are all the same, just look great. Nice thick belly to that clip too. All the clips have that nice little, tiny little bend in them as well, so there's a lot of tension on them. But from the top, they look good. They all look real good. I am always uh, surprised how some companies don't put any tension on these clips. But the milling makes them appear nice and straight, which is awesome. But there's a nice subtle little bloop in them. Uh, there's a nice little video here, a uh, little, little difference in the the clip sides, as you can as you can kind of see, they're all essentially the same thing, uh, which is awesome. I'd like to get a weight on these guys now because uh, you know it's the holidays, New Year, new me. Let's get a baseline and see what the damage is on this gorgeous knife. Uh, I'm assuming the carbon one might be a little lighter. Not by much, but uh, might be, you never know. Uh, where is a little cloth? I could just use this one, I guess. I don't like putting metal on metal if I can avoid it. Any guesses? It's definitely north of five, <laughs> maybe six. Six eight six nine for the carbon. Let's just double check. Six nine for the carbon and titanium on the diamond. Six eight. So clearly, I'm full of. Uh, it's funny that the titanium one's lighter. Six eight. And one more time on the carbon. Six nine. That is funny. I did not expect that to be lighter. Any any uh, reason for that, guys? Why do you think the carbon one is lighter than the titanium one? Or sorry, why do you think the carbon one is heavier than the titanium one? That's very interesting to me and surprising. Huh, I'm a little baffled. But what? Uh, which one do you guys think looks the best? You know, what do you think, diamond? Stripes, carbon, they make a bunch of different variations of this. It's going to be, you know, it, it's going to be the hot knife for the next few months, I imagine. Uh, people trying them out, seeing what they're all about. Um, personally, um, you know, I'm, I'm a complete titanium slut, as you guys know. So I like full tie, you know, just plain Jane with maybe a little accents to it. Maybe a little colorways, nothing too crazy. Um, so I, I'm more geared towards these two. Of the two, I obviously like the diamond, but I think I just dig the uh, the stripes. The diamonds are going to hide, you know, wear I think a little bit better um, than the stripes. So you ding one, it's going to stand right out. Um, but nonetheless, they I think they all look pretty solid. I'm just really surprised, more than anything, how rhinocerosy technical term this blade truly is. Like, isn't that just sick? I'm, like, getting fingerprints on it already. God, that's a nice little angle of it there, of that, uh, 
the stripes. The other thing is like, this liner lock feels tuned super nice. You know, it's not heavy. You're still getting, you know, 40%, 30% on the engagement side. Let's check all of them, let's make sure. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah, like all, all pretty pretty good engagement wise. Very consistent feel to all of them. Other than that carbon has that high pitch snap to it, the sound, the click when you uh, when you open it. And I just think it's because there's less titanium on it and uh, more of a high pitch sound. It's kind of cool. Detent wise, pretty medium. Nothing. It's not light. And if you look at the profile, remember over top of the pivot. That's going to determine how, how much this wants to snap out as we go back on the pivot. And I'll show you with what I'm talking about here with my uh, knife that I always like to show this with. Sure go off Dr. Death. See how the flipper tabs behind the pivot? It makes for a softer kick out. And think of that as uh, the big cog on your bicycle on the back. The bigger the cog, the easier gear it is. So. Uh, when you're pushing that guy out, it just tends to kind of flop, flop out a little bit right now. Same kind of effort. See, you can fail it pretty easily. Whereas the further forward you move it, the more it wants to hammer out. Like on... Uh, uh, which one hammers out here? All of them, my god. Let's grab an F95. Uh, so there you go. You can kind of see. It's in front of the pivot. Flies out. Nice and easy. So, anyway. Different conversation, but uh, this is nice. You know, it is forward, so it flies out. It's a heavier blade. You know, 6.8 ounce knife is a heavy knife. Uh, my God, that's comfortable. So that's the other thing, right? The, the heavier the blade, the, the more force it requires to swing out. So you kind of have to tune it that way. Uh, fit in hand, honestly, I haven't even talked about this. I don't know how long we're into this. Fit in hand, it's incredible. I was not expecting this to fit so nicely. It's got a nice bowl for your thumb. It's not, you know, it's not jimped or anything up top here, but it is nice. You can probably fit this real nice with a glove. Nice and smooth. And then the top is flat as it kind of concaves out on the tip here. So if you do want to, you know, kind of choke forward on it, choke up, you can. I don't see why you'd be using that, but you can. Um, you know, it is pretty far ahead, but you know, that's the design. We've got the nice chamfering on here, which is cool. And then the belt grind is kind of top to bottom on the on the blade itself. Up top, same direction, but on the uh, on the on the blade itself on the uh, flats, it's horizontal. With that Riot logo, so it creates a nice look. And then on the Tanto, it's uh, 45 degrees. So you kind of got three different finishes going on the same blade, which is sick. And then add in the recurve. The recurve being that it's kind of a loop, technical term, loop. Really well done, but super thin. I was not expecting it. Like, it is paper thin on the blade and sh screaming sharp. Yikes. Nice big pins in there as well. Just good use. A good use of, uh, of materials, and I can't get over how long that backspacer is. My God, you know the shiros tend to kind of go up to about there, about the half, a little over the halfway point, and uh, these guys are definitely utilizing all of that to give you that weight, six ounces. Um, I didn't even, jeez, I didn't even measure this freaking thing. Sorry, guys, I'm just lost. I'm like a tiger in the woods, ready to pounce. Um, so yeah, 8 and 5 eighths it looks like to me, and blade length to the center of the choil about 3 and 3 quarters, 3 and 5 eighths, and maybe a 3 and a half, 3 and 5 eighths sharp, somewhere in there, sharpened. But tip to choil, you're in 4 inches, so it's it's not a small knife. Not a small knife at all. Really smooth, really, really smooth. I didn't check blade play at all. Nope, zero. It's a Riot. Nice and centered, obviously, all three, which I mentioned earlier. I like how the clip is attached internally, which, how do they do that? 
I didn't see a screw. Oh no, 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 there's a little, little uh, countersunk hole in there. Interesting. So that's attached internally, 156, which I showed earlier. But that screw that goes up, I, mean, I just can't figure out what the heck that does. Unless there's some kind of some kind of adjustment here that I'm missing. I, I haven't read the spec sheet on this knife at all, full disclosure. Um, I can't see there really being an adjustment unless they it's a two-piece backspacer maybe. That'd be interesting. Well the beveling around the handle is beautifully done. I do want to see the comparison here. The carbon is uh, more rolled, I'd say. Rounded, it's not quite as pronounced on the carbon. Let's move that in the back because the camera stops having a panic attack. The carbon's obviously nice and smooth on the around the edges, but not nearly as pronounced, I'd say. Yeah, same same exact design, nice and nice, and just good tight tight tolerance as well. Made knife. I'm really not complaining about this one, guys. Huh. Two five two on this for reference. If uh, I think this one's going to my friend Matt, so he always likes to know. So there you go, two five two. If you ever go to go to sell it, there's the uh, the evidence that it was featured on the channel. There you go. Super cool knife. And uh, anyway, so that's that's that. My god, Riyadh is just killing it when it comes to the OEMs. They've been making some real consistent knives. I, I had one, who was it, uh, was telling me, I think it was an Evo that had some issues uh, back a while ago on a CKF, but not a Riyadh, sorry. Um, bleh, sorry, nothing to do with this knife or this brand or anything to do with this. My mistake. Um, yeah, beautiful knives. I love all three. I think uh, if I was a choosy man, I think I would choose probably between the, the two full ties, but that's also me because I like full tie. Um, they are pretty plain though. There's no real accents. Like it'd be cool to get the full tie with that kind of Zerka kind of accent thing going on. That would be pretty sick. And then like a clip, like that custom Stellar. That would be so cool. But uh, in terms of fit and hand, they all feel the same. All, all feel really nice. No hot spots, nice rounded edges. Just a nice, smooth, solid knife. And uh, I, I've got no real complaints. I think, personally, if you can get around the fact that, uh, you know, the blade looks like a rhinoceros, I think these are going to be a real big hit. Because people really like those something obscene knives. They they really love, they love the Chavez 229s. Um... You know, they like big, bulky, kind of Riot-made, belt-ground, you know, really cool, grinded blades. Like, it's just, it's a big knife in your face. You know, is it as practical as a, a drop point, Sabenza, small? No, not at all. It's also, like, twice the weight, bigger blade, way bigger, thicker stock, more, a lot more going on than this knife. It's in your face. You know, if you're a Terminator knife guy, you're going to love this. T1000, you're going to love this knife. Just because it follows that entire kind of category. It's just so cool. But uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some pictures of these, throw them up on Instagram, and then uh, I, think, I think Matt is grabbing two of these, three, and then uh, whichever one he doesn't grab is going to end up on the site at some point here. Um, if I'm not super lazy, it'll be sooner than later. And uh, if I am super lazy, then uh, it'll be later. But it is Christmas time right now. I don't know when you guys watch this, but I'll, uh, I'll try to fill, I'll try to put it up in a couple days here. So, um, you know, I'm guessing by now it's probably New Year's Day for you guys. I think that's about right on the Monday, New Year's ish. So Happy New Year's! And uh, you know, if you guys ever have any questions, you know, reach out. Send me a DM, send me a message, 
you know, love to chat more than anything. I'm a, I'm a knife nut at heart here, and uh, this is just, uh, you know, it's a complete passion project for me more than anything. So, um, you know, send me a note, send me a message, comment below, whatever you want to do to chat. I'm all over it, guys. Love the love to chat. So uh, that will be it for the Riet Tiger. That's my first impressions on a couple different ones. Um, let me know how I'm doing below, because uh, you know I did I did this without any spec sheets, no clue what uh, what I missed. What's adjustable? Maybe a Swiss Army toothpick pops out that I don't know about. Um, I'm just kidding, obviously. But uh, yeah, let me know if there's anything I'm missing out on, or if you want to see something else. I'm always for positive feedback to help uh, to help make this more enjoyable for you guys. So yeah, check out the website bladezilla.ca, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, until next time. We'll catch you around. Peace, guys. See ya.